Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unmanned. Unmanned vehicles, a major topic at Oshkosh. Aero environment to supply ADF with its WASP AE UAS. And North Carolina governor signs new UAS bill into law. Hi, I'm Brie Cross. Welcome to the Aero News Network's Airborne Unmanned Program, a weekly news program covering all things unmanned in partnership with AUVSI. The world's largest aviation event features a little bit of everything, but when it comes to unmanned vehicles, a lot of focus was put on one of the aviation world's fastest growing industries. From speeches and interviews conducted with high-ranking government officials, such as FAA Administrator Michael Huerta to U.S. Senator James Inhofe, it was obvious that UAS remained not only a hot topic, but a primary one. EAA this year upgraded both the drone cage and the drone pavilion, located close to their innovation buildings in a spot that was both highly visible as well as well-trafficked. Drone courses and seminars were provided throughout the week, addressing both hobby as well as commercial UAV topics and industry segments. A number of drone-related vehicles, such as the Surefly and the Kitty Hawk Flyer, were on display, while the Kitty Hawk Flyer did some limited demos in the EAA seaplane base. FPV drone racing was also featured throughout the week, both in the enclosed drone cage on the field, as well as some evening activities at EAA's Pioneer Field, a grassy runway located behind the EAA headquarters building. Questions put to numerous attendees and spectators showed that UAV interest from sport and general aviation pilots was on the increase, and some of the prejudices seen over the years is dissipating as the rest of aviation gets educated on the capabilities and realities of UAV operations. Our parent company, Aero News, will be providing some excerpts of interviews and experiences from Oshkosh 2017 shortly. In the next Unmanned Minute, let's take a brief look at a few of the shorter stories that are making the rounds of the unmanned vehicle communities. The latest version of our annual AirVenture Innovation Preview is now history. Its mission, to profile and unveil the newest and most innovative technologies to be seen at EAA's massive AirVenture fly-in in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. It has everything, planes, avionics, software, and of course, drones. This year's version can be accessed via two primary URLs using either Vimeo or YouTube. Check them out at oshcast.com or oshcast.net. The U.S. Navy has successfully tested a laser weapon against a drone in flight. The laser weapon system deployed aboard the USS Ponce amphibious transport ship is ready to be used today and every day. USS Ponce Captain Christopher Well said that the system is more precise than a bullet. It can be used against air targets as well as surface targets. As the use of unmanned aircraft systems rises across the world, researchers from the Defense Department are testing new ways to counter the new threats they could present. The Air Force's 455th Expeditionary Security Forces Squadron have teamed up in Bagram Airfield with a researcher from the Air Force Research Lab to teach airmen how to pilot drones and use them to train coalition forces on how to react to them on the battlefield. Australian drone pilots who fly less than 100 meters over a migrating whale could face large fines and jail time under new regulations that will go into effect August 25th. The legislation is aimed at protecting the massive marine mammals from any disturbance. Drones will be limited to a 100-meter floor and a 122-meter, approximately 400 feet, ceiling under the new law. The FAA has posted a YouTube video entitled How to Use the Unmanned Aircraft Systems Facility Map. They ask, quote, are you filling out an airspace authorization application and wondering what the maximum altitude for flight is? The UAS facility maps can help you determine the max altitude in a certain area. Watch now to learn how you can use the maps to support your application. Look for how to use the Unmanned Aircraft Systems facility map on YouTube. That was our Unmanned Minute, now back to the rest of the news. Aerovironment has participated in a signing ceremony 
for the formal execution of contracts to deliver its WASP AE UAS to the Australian Defence Force starting on July 1, 2018. The UAS will be delivered over a three year period, and AeroVironment is enlisting the help of several Australian partners, including X Tech, General Dynamics, MediaWare, and Sentient Vision. X Tech and AeroVironment will provide local maintenance, training, and field support, and to meet the needs of ADF and the Australian industry, the WASP AE will be modified with Australian content. Quote, this collaboration reflects the unwavering commitment of all four companies and the ADF to support and protect the dedicated members of the Australian Armed Forces with the best UAS capabilities available in the world today to help them proceed with certainty and ensure successful missions, says David Sharpen, Vice President of AeroVironment's Tactical Unmanned Aircraft Systems Business Unit. Weighing less than three pounds, the WASP AE includes a variety of features such as superior imagery, increased endurance, encrypted video, and ease of use. The UAS, which is launched by hand, can land on the ground or in fresh or salt water. North Carolina Governor Roy Cooper has signed two bills affecting drone operations within his state. House Bill 128 prohibits UAS near prisons defining near as, quote, a horizontal distance of 500 feet or a vertical distance of 250 feet. This law takes effect December 1st, while North Carolina's DOT will define applicable using signs. House Bill 337 revises existing state laws applicable to UAS. The language of the law has been changed, quote, to clarify that UAS laws will now apply to model aircraft as well. And this part of the law will also go into effect as of December 1st. Under the law, model aircraft users are still exempt from North Carolina's permitting requirements. There is an age criteria requiring a person to be at least 16 years old to obtain a commercial permit to operate UAS, which now matches the minimum age federal law stipulates. Further, people who want to obtain a commercial permit will be able to use any government-issued form of photo identification allowed by the FAA. Restrictions on UAS and emergency management have also been loosened, with emergency management agencies now able to use UAS for all activities related to emergency management. Private and commercial operators will now be allowed to assist law enforcement with emergency management missions, such as search and rescue operations. Applicable changes have also been made to the UAS Knowledge Test Study Guide. Well, that's our program for this week. In addition to this program, our daily Airborne Limited episodes covering the entire aviation and aerospace world are streamed Monday through Friday. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and tweet us. Get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net and more information on the innovative world of all things unmanned at auvsi.org and airborne-unmanned.net. We'll see you next week.